Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Welcome to the Bourbon and BS Podcast. I'm Jake Sanders and Steve Crane. We make up the Bourbon and BS Podcast. Thank you for tuning in this evening. We always like to urge our viewers and our listeners to give us a five-star review on here. If you just go to our bio and give us a five-star review, that'd be wonderful. Um, share it. We always like to share it ourselves, and that's how we grow this thing. Share it with your local cigar community. Share it with your local bourbon community. And uh, this is that's how we build this thing. We appreciate all the support up until 72 and, and even further on. So we were just on Whiskey Business Podcast with Dino Trapotas and his sound guy, Greg, and his video guy, John. And it was a blast on Monday. And keep a lookout for those two episodes. It was a two-part. We did a two-part, yeah, absolutely. And so uh, it was funny because they did. They, Dino knew that it was going to be a long one, but um, they weren't really ready for us. But we all had a blast. So look out for those two episodes within the up and coming weeks. I believe they they do their stuff on Monday, right? Is that yeah? It'll drop on Monday. I believe this next Monday is is part one, and then we get into kind of like the. Uh, the, the Q and A like cards, yeah. it was interesting. The second part was good, so it was all good. It was it was, it was a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to that next two Mondays, it and we'll share Monday. those links. Yeah, for sure. So again, this is something that you can listen to on the road with iTunes, Spotify, Overcast on Android devices. So as much as we love the fact that you guys make this an event every Wednesday, you can listen to it on the go all the time. <laughs> I do want to say this, with tonight's episode being just Jake and myself, we've got some content for you with the whiskey, the cigar, uh, and then also the topic about time to recenter, but I, I want to encourage everyone out there, if you guys are on at all tonight, but especially on the, the second portion of it, to, to throw out some questions, throw out some, yep. some, some content with us. I'd love to see what we can do as far as when it's just the two of us to kind of have everyone out there as the, the third guest, if you will, you know, the third person yeah. on there. So see if you guys can do that. I'm almost done sharing this to a lot of different groups here, which I appreciate all the support out there. Gotcha. And as soon as Steve's done doing that, I'm going to do the same. <laughs> Normally we do this simultaneously just because then <coughs> that way you're not just sitting there listening to silence. <laughs> which is always good for TV or, uh, or radio, obviously. Yeah. We the groups seem to be expanding. I've been invited to a lot of different groups here recently, so that's good. Yeah. We hope that uh, everyone is staying dry, even though it's pretty much impossible here in the Midwest. <laughs> There's a ton of water out by my parents' house out east, and uh, that's pretty crazy to see with some of the roads being flooded and interesting. All right, let's do this. Ready? Yeah. You want to record? Ready? Yeah. All right. All right. And here we go. Hello everyone and happy Whiskey Wednesday. I'm Jake Sanders along with Steve Crane and we make up the Bourbon and BS Podcast. Thank you everyone for tuning in to episode 72 and we are going to be discussing time to recenter. It is just Steve and myself which has been a while since we've done that and it's, it's, it feels good to recenter with just the two of us. And, That's nice. Um, it, it's, it's very nice and it, it's been a long road. We were just on the Whiskey Business podcast with Dino Tripotis, his great, great crew, Greg does the sound and John does the video and they make a great production and it was a lot of fun. We actually made it into a two-parter and I don't know how Dino didn't know that. I think he knew it was going to happen, but he didn't want to. He said he thought he knew. Yeah, we would. <laughs> but it happened anyway. Because he's been on our podcast, <laughs> so he knows exactly how, how conversations keep rolling. Yeah, for sure. So it was a lot of fun. The first one we were kind of talking about the whiskey and it was more of an interview style with the two of us and talking about the history of the Bourbon and BS podcast and the second one was kind of a rattle battle of questions and he had a stack of cards that he had a lot of interesting questions on there. And I want to borrow those cards because yeah. I thought that there were some good questions on that. A lot of them were very uh, dark though and that's what that's what Dino kind of he was shuffling through the cards the entire right. time exactly trying to pick out ones that after the first two questions that we would try to end on a lighter note absolutely <laughs> so yeah check that out whiskey business podcast check them out all the time but we had Dino on here before and and I thought that this uh Monday was nice it was nice to be able to to be outside of our it was weird our norm 
um, and be kind of the be the guest for the first time. I first feel, time that I've actually ever been a guest on a podcast. I felt weird to be honest because you get so used to being on this podcast, at least the way I feel, and then going and doing something else with someone else. <laughs> it's weird. It just feels yeah. you're not in your element anymore. I want to say it was less less pressure, but I mean at the same time it was it was more or less. Um, I don't know. It, it was a little uncomfortable just because you, you and I weren't kind of in charge of it. You had to be more reactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't, didn't know what was coming type thing. Not that we do on this, but yeah, <laughs> it was good. No, it was a lot of fun. So, if this is your first time tuning in to the Bourbon MBS podcast, we talk about whiskey, we talk about cigars, but mainly we talk about a life topic and we get into some deep conversations and some laughs. So. Uh, we hope that you enjoy this, and uh, who are our sponsors this evening, Steve? Sponsors, uh, as always, as of now, we're about to, uh, I think, branch off into some new sponsorships coming up in the upcoming month or two, so stay tuned for that stuff there. Um, but uh, right now, like, I've, I've lit up the HR Maduro. We're going to get into that. That's uh, going to be from Tinderbox at Easton, which is a sponsor of ours. I'm using matches tonight. I feel like So I'm classy. The new uh, Alec Bradley and BS Cigar Company matches. Mm-hmm. BS Cigar Company, thanks for the continued support. Still excited. As soon as the uh, the trade show's done, the IPCPR in the next couple weeks, I assume that we're going to um, have some more growth opportunities for the BS Gold Project. So I'm looking forward to that. And we should have the BS Silvers in three sizes now. Um, coming coming at us in the next week or so as well. I, I know that was well before the, the trade show yeah. um, <laughs> inventory. So uh, should be good there. And then also uh, Altidus, uh, Altidus USA, Monte Cristo, Romeo Julieta, Upman, Butera, uh, lots, lots of other ones. They have been supportive of us. Paul Waller and, and now Josh Bentley have been very supportive of us uh, going forward with this. And they are uh, planning on continuing to sponsor. So thank you guys very much. And uh, that is going to be our second cigar, which is the Monte Cristo Nicaragua series. Great they, cigar. They support Great us, cigar. and at the same time, they always provide the uh, the second cigar of the week, as long as we don't have a, a sponsor of the episode. So, yeah. fantastic. That's by AJ Fernandez. We've been over that one, I believe, before, mm-hmm. uh, but the HR we have not, and there's a lot of cool uh, history behind that. So, thank you guys very much. Uh, I like, and, and this is something that was interesting, I thought, different with, with Dino and, and the guys over there. The fact that they don't do Facebook Live, which is something that I think that we, I don't want to say we started, but at least in this realm, we've definitely... Uh, I'll say it, we started it. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's someone else that has, but this was something that when we didn't have Facebook Live going, they were able to kind of stop and, and they're going to go back and edit the video, they're going to edit the, the audio and everything like that, and we do a little bit of that, but uh, you know, a lot of this is, is kind of on the fly. We, we save it on the audio once, I go back through and I edit a little bit of the uh, the... the actual podcast but as far as this with Facebook Live we mentioned it before we started recording the, the, the audio but you know we're hoping that tonight's a great example of why we like to do this and that is to get audience participation you know it's almost like an old school um, you know, call in radio show Yeah. you know so we can kind of have these callers coming in and then uh, they can contribute to the conversation you guys can talk amongst, e- amongst each other and uh, so I'm interested to see where that goes tonight I'd love to get a lot of a lot of feedback rolling through on this and, and contributing to uh, not only the cigars and the whiskey, but also with the topic of time to reset or whatever you guys think that means now. We can go back to some comments and stuff like that and the importance of that. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. We want to dive into the whiskey? Sure. So Steve was gracious enough to go out and get the big, pretty, it's not big, it's just the rich of the big and rich, right? Correct. Yeah, <laughs> John think, Rich. Yeah, I don't think big has anything to do with it. John Rich of Big and Rich came out with the Redneck Riviera, but the company itself is Redneck Riviera, Riviera Whiskey Company out of Portland, Oregon. But the funny part is it's coming out of Eastland Distillery in Nash- is, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Not so, too surprising being a, a country star. Yeah. And you'll notice on the taste, um, it's it's very mellow. It's got the classic caramel that you would imagine from a Jack Daniels or a George Dickerson or any type of Tennessee whiskey. It's not a exact Tennessee whiskey, but um, it is actually a blend. It's a blended American whiskey with 95% American light whiskey aged for at least two years and 5% American whiskey aged at least one year. 
So it's kind of interesting. I did read something that was cool about the bottle and a little something that I didn't know was that, so if, I don't know if anybody caught that I said light whiskey. When I read that the first time. Light whiskey? Yeah, I said, what the hell is light whiskey? And Not so, heavy. Yeah, exactly. It's just color. It's the color. It's the proof. This is an 80 proof American uh, blended whiskey. It says small batch. A small batch whiskey with vanilla honey smoothness and a subtle oak finish. But it's right out of the gate, like on the front way of whiskey. Yeah. Like, this is it. Don't. Yeah. No need to flip this around to get the the subtleties of it. This is what you're gonna gonna be drinking. And don't forget that it says hashtag Drink American on the right. back there. <laughs> but, but so the interesting part about the the light whiskey, I didn't know this, was that, um, so if this, this says 95% American light whiskey, if it was under 20%, it would have to be in a completely different category. Say that again. So it's 95% American light whiskey, and it's aged at least two years. If it was under, if it was 20% or below within this blend, it would be a completely different category instead of American blended whiskey. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it'd be, what category? Uh, there, it, there's, it, it'd be a different um, category of blended whiskeys. Okay. But that's kind of the, the gist of it. That's the light part. Yeah, that's all. Got it. But it's interesting. I would figure that, um, I mean, the color on it is just honey. It's, I mean, Very it, much so, yeah. It looks like a golden honey. Um, off the nose, it has a lot of caramel. What it says on the bottle, they're pretty much exactly right. Um, it says full body, but I don't think it's full body at all. <laughs> it's eighty per, It's eighty proof. So, but it is delicate. It has a nice sweetness to it. When we're talking about whiskeys, though, is, is it similar to cigars with the strength? So when you say like full body, is that strength or is that just the body of it? Kind of like I think of um, like wines. Yeah, I think more like wine, where like, uh, you know, it's 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 a full body, but it doesn't mean it's like a stronger alcohol content. Oh, okay, I don't know. Okay, if it's, if I'm sure you, I'm you sure, can talk about it any any which way. I'm but. sure they would be accustomed to going towards the wine, as you say. So what what does full body mean for wine? I would just think it's got a lot more depth to it. Okay. Um, which you could say this one does or doesn't, but I, I just feel like, you know, when you say full body wine, it's not necessarily like, it's like, oh, this thing's got a lot of high alcohol content. This is just, it's more of like, it hits your palate in a lot of different ways. It's just got a lot of body to it. Yeah, I will say for one thing is that I'm so glad that it being so young, it doesn't have a very tannic, metallic, sharp yeah, like, finish. Yeah, it's been soaking in rocks. Yeah, or like, it's been sitting in like a metal barrel yeah, for metal three jet. years. It was one, what was, oh, I, I was bringing it up. I mean, that's what I get a lot from uh, the Special Reserve. Yeah, Weller Special Reserve, yeah. I agree. Which is interesting that, you know, in Ohio, it's, it's still difficult to come by Weller, and it's, there's always Weller Special Reserve <laughs> on the shelf right now. Exactly. The red's gone, the antique's gone, um, and obviously you can't find a 12 or anything like that, but I mean, what Weller Special Reserve, I mean, it's like, People just walking by that at this point. Well, that's why. You, well, another reason is too is they can't get it off the secondary market. Nobody wants it. Everybody can pick up the Weller Red the Antique and sell it for twenty bucks more than what it is. I think it's because it's a good whiskey. It is a good whiskey. Especially so I know people like it. It's not a bad whiskey, but for me, it's like I think the it's it's not just the fact that there's there's more of it. Maybe that's why it is. But I just feel like people aren't I me mean, buying that for the twenty two dollars on the Ohio shelves right now. I don't know about. The states that you guys are in, but I mean, it's 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 like Jameson now. That's how much this was, right? Twenty twenty four ninety nine. Twenty four, yeah. yeah. So it's approachable whiskey. It's approachably priced. Yeah. Right, and and it's something new. I I think I think this stands against Jack Daniels. I mean, yeah. It's a ten. I mean, it's a Tennessee whiskey without being called Tennessee whiskey. I would call it that because it's got that smooth, rich, vanilla, mellow. Yeah. You know, it's not rich, sorry, smooth. It's just smooth. I think they want you to say it's rich. I know, but it's just smooth. I, I don't know, I think it's a... Um, it's, it's a mellow, caramel whiskey. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Doesn't really have a lot of burn or anything like that to it. Nate says, you know, would you call it a good starter whiskey? For sure. Absolutely. For 25 bucks, I think it's I think it's a nice starter whiskey. I mean, it's... 
I don't know. We'll see how the, the next one, Kevin King's out there sipping on Blanton's tonight, which people like or don't like. But, Very amazing, Kevin. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you got some, man. You know, a month ago before he moved, he said that he'd never had Blanton's before. So the fact that Apparently he's living up in Florida. Exactly. That's cool. <laughs> Big sexy in we don't, we don't. We don't miss you either. <laughs> we don't miss you either. But you like it, though? I think it's 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 nice. It's not, um, I don't want to say refreshing. Like some of the lighter whiskeys are a little bit more refreshing. It's 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 got a little dryness, I think, on the end, but it's not much burn. What are you saying, Nate? What? That. Nate's on, our producer tonight. On the back end, that's where I taste kind of that one year. The one year? Is, is on that finish. You get just a little bit of burn on the back. Yeah. I told Nate that my taste buds probably wouldn't be the best tonight just because I had jungle bio and I burnt my tongue. So. Doing all right so far. <laughs> you all right there? Yeah. <laughs> was it spicy or was it, it just, was just, it, it just was hot? Just like, hot. Literally. I, I, was temperature. Hungry. I was hungry and I was impatient and I wanted to just eat it and I didn't listen. So. <laughs> Jesus. All right, well. But it's still good. It's still good. It's good whiskey. Sad part is I didn't even taste the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof the first time. That's how bad my tongue was. I feel like you burnt it more with the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah, just yeah. It's just gonna like yeah, numb all that stuff. So. This is good. Thanks for getting this, dude. Yeah, I think it's good. I you know I. I is there a charity here? Yeah, there's a partnership yeah. here. Did you not go over that yet? I didn't. So it, it does say Redneck Riviera Whiskey is uh, is proud to partner with Folds of Honor which has been providing educational sponsorships to spouses and children of America's fallen and disabled service members since 2007. A portion of the proceeds from each bottle of Redneck Riviera Whiskey will be donated to this incredible organization. Please visit foldsofhonor.org for more information. So, I mean, he's doing a lot of good stuff here, it seems like. And it even has a... Uh, <laughs> it has a, 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 a recipe, recipe here. So inside, if you know, we don't have any of this stuff, so we can't really do it, and I just broke it off there, so there we go. It's a peach, um, right? Saddle Up is the uh, cocktail. Two ounces <laughs> Redneck Riviera Whiskey, one ounce peach puree, and two ounces of lemonade. Uh, shake and pour into a glass garnish with sage leaf. Notes, the goal of this cocktail was to find an approachable way to drink whiskey by using familiar flavors of peach and lemon. <laughs> the sweet peaches enhance the honey in the whiskey, while the citrus allows the vanilla to pop. And then he's got the uh, the message here from John Rich. Oh, goodness. My team and I worked tirelessly on the creation of Redneck Riviera Whiskey. I wanted an American blend like nothing else on the shelf, and that's exactly what we got. RRW is as smooth as it gets, and I'm proud to offer it to America's work hard, play hard crowd. Well. And he looks very enthusiastic <laughs> on the picture. I mean, it tastes like Jackie. But again, my uh, taste buds aren't the best tonight. So. Kylie says the goal that, that, that cocktail is diabetes. I think that's a little aggressive. Diabetes is not going to come from one cocktail. However, that was really aggressive. Good lord. I, mean, she's, I do like it. What's she thinking old fashioned is? It's just much sugar the same, probably. Much the same. More sugar. Yeah, much the same. Uh, <laughs> Nate, Nate says, you know, is it similar to I.W. Harper in terms of being light? No, I think this has got even like more body, if you will, than, than I.W. Harper. The, the I.W. Harper that we had, um, shit, almost a year ago, maybe? It's like water. Well, it's it's extremely light, but it's extremely smooth. So it's almost like the the vodka of whiskeys, right? I mean, it's like you yeah, can, you can just drink it, and it's like yeah. or tequila, like a good tequila, you, know, you don't really get it. Like take a shot of tequila, you kind of like, well, no, I taste something at the end. But the I.W. Harper is just very, very. It's not watered down, but it, it's very, very smooth. Where this has a little bit more to it, in my opinion. Yeah. No, it has a to me. It has a lot more. I think. Like I said, I think I.W. Harper is water. It is the definition of what light whiskey is. Leads to a good night. <laughs> Stay hydrated with I.W. Harper. Goodness gracious. But I do like this. Uh, it, I don't know if anyone else out there has had this yet. It's interesting. Like at the, the local liquor store where I'm at, um, you know, they've had it on the shelf. But this week there was only, I think, three bottles or four bottles. So I don't know if that's the same order. The same cases that came in that is not moving, that he's not um, he's not moving a whole lot of it, and people aren't really grabbing it, or if he has ordered a couple times and people are grabbing it. Yeah, That's I would hard to say. I would definitely have this on the Fourth of July. I'm just gonna say that. You're gonna pick up a bottle for Fourth of July. Yeah, why not? Like it's it. got it's got a nice uh, it says work hard, play hard. Obviously, it's Story red, life, white, and, red, white, and blue. I mean, come yeah. on. Okay, why not America? America. <laughs> 
Right. I don't know how it goes with the cigar, though. What do you think? Well, <laughs> you tell me. Um, I think the cigar is a bit much for the whiskey itself. I think, but I do like the vanilla hints, and I do like the the smoothness, um, the honey that comes out yeah. with the cigar. So this is definitely one of those ones that when we talk about pairings, sometimes at least with pairings, my idea is is that one's got to one one has to complement the other. They can't just kind of mesh most of the time. Most of the time, it's one that is the 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 base. And the other kind of comes in and makes it whole. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think the base is definitely this cigar, and then the whiskey's allowing the the flavors to come. I, I think this would go better. Maybe we'll find out if we've got some left. But I think it'd go better with the Nicaragua series. On yeah. Crystal. Because yeah. you have that medium, a little bit um, lighter notes. This yeah, the the, the HR blue Maduro is is definitely going to be um, on the fuller side. Yeah. And strength wise and also flavor. I do like the flavor. Yeah, it's got a little bit of spice to it, a little bit of pepper in the retro hail, quite a bit of pepper in the retro hail. We're smoking the uh, Corona Gorda size right now, so um, it, it's it's definitely more pronounced. Yeah, definitely. And, and why is that again? Is that because of the ratio between the wrapper leaf, binder, and filler? Typically. Okay. Typically, yeah. And I mean, just even the, the airflow, right? I mean, think about it. I mean, you, you've got it more constricted, if you will. So it's, it's, I would say it's more concentrated based on the blend as well. Yeah. So typically you're going to have that. I mean, you, you, you find that with like a figurado of, of some cigars is that they are sometimes more complex because that, if that channel of, of everything, like the airflow is, is changing. There's more filler at times. There's, yeah. You know, all, that, all those things come into, to, um, into play, for sure. sure. Figurados are fun to smoke. They're, they're like a roller coaster, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with the HR, I mean, so what do you know about this, Jay? The HR? You, you've heard I, a lot of it on, you know, around the shop. I don't know much, but it, so it's it's a Hirochi Robaina. Robaina. Is that the correct? Robaina. Okay, cool. So, and, and he was born in Cuba and is basically the prince of cigars based on a documentary that is on Amazon Prime, which is a great documentary. Prince of Smoke. Prince of Smoke. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's actually a, a great hour and a half documentary. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not mean to just correct you, but it's a, it's only about 30 minutes. Oh, it is? Prince of Smoke's only about 30 minutes, Amazon Prime. Uh, check it out, it's a quick, quick view, um, but there's a lot of information in there. There's also a lot of good visuals as far as them down there. You get to see Hiroshi. Yeah. You get to see the family, you get to see them on the farms, talk about you know the family and everything like that. I, I, I think I messed it up because I was watching the other Cuban cigar right. thing back to back with it. <laughs> and but, so he's, yeah. he's fifth generation. And uh, you know it says on this band, which is actually very, very, um, call it, uh, it's a tribute, I think, to the, uh, the Robaena um, Cuban cigar. So with that being said, the Robaena family is the only family, the only farmer that has a cigar brand yeah. coming through Habanos SA uh, with the family name on it. And it's a very simple band. It's actually got, uh, instead of HR on here, it's it's a, just an R. So the, the Robaina for, for a Cuban cigar oh, is a very similar gotcha. band, but it has just the R on there. So you may think this is kind of a more simple band, but it is very much a tribute to the, the Cuban line. Well, it makes sense too, because that's, well, it, like the, I'm thinking of the ring that you see in the yeah. documentary, yeah. and it looks like that band, I would assume, right? And, and it's I got the R on it, yeah. And that's passed down from his grandfather, is that correct? I believe so. Yeah. So, it's interesting with this, first of all, when you guys, if you can find these, I mean, I, I definitely encourage you to look for these. I know you can get them online, but if you guys want, I'll mention it now, is that this is a time to mention it, that the, the Hiroshi, the HR, they call it HR, that the blue Maduro we've got in three different sizes at Tinderbox at Eastern. We're going to do 15% off between now and the end of business on Tuesday coming up. Yeah. So all that information will be out there. But uh, yeah, this is the time to actually try them. Like I said, if you're in the area, I definitely recommend coming in. We also carry the Claro, which is the white, and then Signature, which is like a brownish label. Signature is my favorite out of the three. Signature is my favorite as well, but this one is, is outselling it by far. But we only do have the one size of the uh, Signature at the time because uh, it's, it's the other two sizes are on back order. So. Uh, but so 
With this, it's Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, which is actually surprising. They call it Ecuadorian Habano Maduro. Um, and then it's got uh, Nicaragua filler and binder. And Very they nice. are teaming up with, um, my understanding, it says this is a collaboration of La Corona cigars. I read this Cubicana. Um, but basically you got, um, it, it's at Omar Alaman. So Omar uh, Gonzalez Alaman and uh, Hirochi. So um, it says La Corona cigars, SA factory on the box. It's made at Cubicana, maybe that's the old name or it's, I, I've heard of them as well. But uh, this is definitely something that Hirochi has had an influence on. But when I was down in Cuba uh, back in August, I was fortunate enough to hang out with Hirochi. I was just about to ask you about that. Yeah, I was able to hang out with him, and that's actually what kind of started this conversation. And then when, uh, for us here in Columbus at Tinderbox at Easton, when Brian, the owner, went down more recently, he also got to hang out with Hirochi, started talking to him, started talking to Spencer Drake, who I had actually gotten a card for when he's the one that handles the distribution for the United States. So he's with White Hat Distribution. And uh, so that's kind of the conversation that all transpired for us to pick it up. I've had guys in from Chicago ask for them recently, so it's interesting to see that they are growing a little bit. We just got a call the other day while we were working, if we had them. For the HR? Yeah. Yeah. So there's people out there looking for them. Yeah, and, and rightfully so. I mean, it's definitely, they know their stuff, clearly. I mean, so Hiroshi, like you said, is a fifth generation farmer. Lots of pepper on that retro. I told you. Lots of pepper on that retro. And, and so he, yeah. Fidel and, and, and his, his grandfather, Alejandro, so my understanding is Fidel kind of made Alejandro the, you know, Don Alejandro was the, the face yeah. of Cuban tobacco a lot. I mean, you got to picture this guy. He's got very pronounced wrinkles, you know, in his face as time went on. I mean, it was like that class, it's like a Marlboro man, you know what I mean? Like, it's like very much Lots of what you would think of as a tobacco farmer that smokes a lot of cigars, you know? <laughs> and so they had a lot of paintings in all the uh, cigar shops and everything else with him in it. Um, and this is not just the, the, the Fifth Avenue store, which actually the family also runs. Don Carlos, Hirochi's dad, runs the Fifth Avenue store. So he's there most of the time during the week. Yeah. He was also able to hang out with him that same day. Um, on the Rowena farm, but uh, with this being, you know, all that being said, it was, it's interesting that they're able to do this through Nicaragua. You know, he's got yeah. basically people running the farm, running the business, his name's on it. I think there was, from my understanding and my, what I've heard, I think there, there was some, some pushback, if you will, from the uh, Cuban government. From, yeah. <laughs> Because what I've heard, and I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, I guess Hirochi does have the visa to come over and actually go to the IPCBR, go to some of these things. And what I understand, like when I see him or you see him on the Prince of Smoke documentary, which again, I recommend everyone goes out and, and, and checks out if they can. But, you know, he's ball cap, you know, kind of the button up, short sleeve, white weight shirt, you know yeah. what I mean? Jeans or shorts or whatever. And uh, and then when I when I hear what he, like he wears like nice suits and stuff when he comes into the states, so oh, I'm sure. And he gets photographed with that, so I don't know if that was part of the, the issue. But I mean, you, you, with the Cuban communism, you can't really sh you can't be flashy. Yeah, you know what I mean. You can't show you that you're money. right. You can't show that the government's not getting enough of your money type thing. I mean, that's not what that that whole system's about, um, unfortunately. But. That's where it was interesting to see that he, he has done a lot of this stuff and getting out there with that name, with his name on it. It's not the same thing as like Altidus, our sponsors, you know, Monte Cristo, Romeo Julieta, Upman, things like that. They do, I guess, um, the parent company of Altidus, Imperial, is going through. They're trying to, um, I guess, sell off basically most of the premium cigar side of it. I don't yeah. know if we talked about that on no, this, this, this podcast. Nate says we did talk about it briefly. Uh, so his news a few weeks ago. You, I don't know if you were on that one. Maybe that's what it was. But it was <laughs> no, I mean because we had the three weeks where you weren't on it. But yeah. it's, it's real recent. So they own, from what they say, roughly half of, of Habanos SA. So the parent company of Altidus, that's where a lot of these names are coming yeah. from as far as naming rights. This is the first time that I've seen actually like a Cuban farmer putting his name on it and somehow is actually tied into the business at this at this moment is the one in very cuba, unique it is the one in cuba just robina like the r just the r so hirochi's name isn't even on it, correct hirochi's name's not on it just his last name yeah. it's not don alejandro which was the the big i guess that's that transition from farmer to like face and everything else and then you had don carlos and now it's hirochi's running the operation got it 
that Don Carlos is still in the picture, but he's not running the operation. He's more about like part of the, the, the Fifth Avenue store and still part of the farm and everything like that. But yeah. it, it, it's very interesting to see that. The, the difference is too, in, in Cuba, it, it's, it's, again, from my understanding, what I learned down there is that a roll band, like people will tell you, like, oh, it's all their, their tobacco. Yeah. Not the case, from what my understanding. It's actually the same as anything else. All the tobacco from, from, from Barocci's farm and everyone else's farms go to Habano's SA, they sort it all out, they blend the, the cigars, and then they put the label on it huh. based on the blend. Yeah. So, not necessarily, from my understanding, that the Robaina cigars in Cuba, your Cuban cigars, are all of their tobacco. It's not just exclusively stuff they grow. The only way you're going to get stuff that they exclusively grow is if you go out to the farms and they give you a cigar to smoke that is all of their tobacco, you, which they do, do have. Do you have some of those? I don't have any of those. Yeah, I, I did smoke. I did smoke a couple. Um, he actually is interesting. He he brings my. I think one's called the Godfather, and I forget what the other one is. But they're actually very thick ring gauge cigars that he was he was giving us. That That's day. surprising for Cuban cigars, right? Correct. But you think about what he's doing right now. Yeah. He, he's dipping into the, the the American market. He's dipping into the fact that uh, you know he knows what the consumer wants. So mm -hmm. this is a glass that. Like uh, the Redneck Riviera, that's a glass that it, the whiskey just like pours out of. Like, you know how some, like they kind of like, you have to almost force it over to make yeah. whiskey come out. This one just like, yeah. Just, yeah. It's like, you're getting drunk. <laughs> this one's, yeah, just come on out. <laughs> kind of says, work hard, play hard is the pumpkin spice latte for dudes. Uh, it's very gender specific. So, what are the Ugg boots, Kylie? <laughs> For, for dudes? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Kyle, you're still on. What would be the uh, equivalent to the Ugg boots? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Kevin asked what we're smoking. Hopefully, if you're still on, Kevin, you realize we're smoking the HR Blue Maduro. Um, what are your thoughts on this, besides the pepper and everything else? Um, I was actually really pleasantly surprised with it, because from what people were saying about the the Gordo, and, and, and you did mention that, is the size, right, with this, and Corona Gorda, is that the correct size? This is a Corona Gorda. Yeah. So, and, but I've noticed that with the people in the shop, our regulars, they get the Gorda. Is that correct, or is that? They're doing. So we have. What's the, the biggest size? Gordo. The, the Gorda. But we have the Toro also, which is actually I think a bit more popular. Yeah. And so, but when we first got them, and everybody was wanting to do the Gordo. Because that's what and Brian put out. Yeah. Well, that's true. And people were saying that it got really, really bitter towards like the last inch or so. Really? So, but initially I, I was really pleasantly surprised with this. I think it has really good flavor. I'm not getting a lot of um, like head buzz off of it as the strength is there, but I don't okay. normally get that anyways. But I like the flavor. Like I said, I like it. Um, actually, the more that I smoke it, I do actually like it with this whiskey. Yeah, I think that, but I still think the whiskey's complimenting it. Um, the pepper is there, but only on the retro hill for me. I don't get a lot of it out of the taste right now. Right. But um, I, I, I really like it. I, I like the signature a little more, just because it's a little bit more creamier, a little smoother. Yeah, and I'd say this one does have a little bit much. Maybe it's the whiskey, but I think it's got a little drier finish. It's like kind of like yeah, it's more abrupt on yeah. the finish. It's not this lingering, lingering flavor. It's not bitter, but it's not going to be anything like you said, like creamy or or necessarily like mouth watering like some. It just goes away too. Like I've noticed That's what that. I mean. Yeah, I've noticed that too with cigars. I, I I say that a lot with whiskey, whether it either goes away or it sticks around because of the viscosity. And I've noticed that I, I've been trying to really compare whiskey and cigars as a whole together. Yeah. And uh, it's it's interesting with this one. That you are right. It just kind of goes away. So it, it's. Uh, Kind of nice with both of them. Where on um, the contrary, and possibly it's the, the pairing of this, but uh, the uh, the Redneck Riviera, which I, I think is a great name for an American whiskey, um, I'll, I'll say that it, it actually has a lot more finish now, where it lingers a bit more. It's it's, it's going to be something that with that, it's got that um, you said vanilla. And yeah, honey. vanilla honey. I mean, they're not wrong when they put it on the bottle, especially when you have something that's going to be standing on its own with it like this. I mean, Nate, you're doing both of these right now too. And, and I mean, what are your thoughts? It's very smooth, very enjoyable. Which one? The, the, well, the whiskey, very smooth, very enjoyable. 
cigar's got a little bit more body to it than the whiskey does, but you're dead on about how short the finish is on the cigar versus the finish on the whiskey does yeah. last a little bit longer, which is kind of surprising for such a light whiskey and fuller cigar. Yeah, on the front end of the whiskey, when I'm, when I'm, it, it's, it's all back in now. Like, I've got a little bit of flavor, you know, going from the cigar back to the whiskey. Yeah. But it's that, that lingering finish. I mean, there is, there is, I don't want to say it's like a cocktail, but I mean, it's, it does have a, a sweetness to it on the back end. Yeah. Um, like, almost like on the, the back of my tongue, roof of my mouth a little bit. Um, it, it's got that, 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 I guess, like I said, lingering finish. It's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Much more enjoyable, I guess, towards the end of my first glass. Yeah, it, no, I agree. It, it's definitely lingering. Yeah, it's, back, it's, it's further back than we think. Yeah. Like it's, when we first started drinking it, we tasted it more kind of up front. The front, yeah. But as we've finished the first glass of it, it's moved to the back. Yeah, yeah, the flavor is lingering after a few glasses or so. But I, I did want to point out one thing that I didn't mention before about the whiskey. So yeah. we've talked a lot about the sourcing and how the discrepancies are with how you label things yeah. on the bottle itself. So yeah. let, let me read this off. It says, bottled by Redneck Riviera Whiskey Company, Portland, Oregon, for Redneck Riviera Whiskey Company, comma, Nashville, Tennessee. So this is how they get away with sourcing it, but I don't know. I, just, I still wish companies would just say where it comes from. <laughs> just say that it comes from Eastland, Distillery, Nashville, Tennessee. Why would you just say four? You know what I mean? Well, because it's it, when it says bottled by it, I mean, it doesn't even say where it's sourced, but I mean, basically, they're, they're, they're shipping it to like the company, John Rich's company, or whoever's owning this the yeah. majority state. They're based out of Nashville, Tennessee, and then, you know, but it's being produced on the West Coast, bottling it there. No, 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 no I'm saying backwards from what you just said. Well, I don't understand how you would you would do it in Nashville, send it to get bottled over in, in, Oregon. in Oregon, and then back towards... No, that's not what's happening. It's it's being... So you're saying... Eastland is in Nashville. Portland, Oregon is where it's being bottled. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. Okay. But I, I, my understanding, when I read something like that, I think of the, the cigar side of it, right? So the uh, cigar is manufactured in Nicaragua or Miami, for BS Cigar Company in Columbus, Ohio. Right. So when I read that, it's it's something being sourced from the, the West Coast or being bottled there and then being it's for this this company. So it's like all a naming rights thing. <laughs> yeah. It's the way I read it. It's yeah. not that it's, it's, very it's being confusing. sourced in Nashville, then bottled there, like they're shipping the barrels out there and then they're 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 distributing it to the US from more. Yeah. Well no, and that's, that's I read it the opposite. That's way. the one big problem with the whiskey world, man. There's a lot of discrepancies in how you label stuff and those laws are changing all the time as we right? speak. Yeah. There's constant meetings in the state of Kentucky and around the nation now. Now that there's a lot more distilleries and yeah. how whiskey is being consumed. So it's a lot it's interesting. But I wanted to point that out. But I like both of them together. I, like I said, this is my second glass. Um, we'll see what happens with the Nicaragua. I, I'll, I think I'll be really, I think we'll both be really happy with that one. But this is good too. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, HR Cigars, um, like this blend, I, I look forward to having the signature on here. Um, so that's the other one. The Claro, I like, but it's just not up my alley as much, but I get why they do it, you know what I mean? You're gonna have, a, but I had a, a milder smoker in the day smoking the uh, the HR Claro, the white band, and they thought that it was on the fuller side. So, really? Yeah. Maybe it was because of the weird spice that's in that one. That could be it, yeah. Because yeah. it does have an interesting spice. But he was using the terms hard, not for that one, but for other cigars he's been smoking recently, <laughs> and he was using harsh and bite, and, and but then towards the end of the conversation, he was saying that um, that, that he he was enjoying some of the other ones, so now the milder ones aren't as much up his alley. Yeah. So he's still trying to figure it out, like exactly what he's enjoying smoking, and that's the that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of this podcast too. I think that you know with the whiskeys and the cigars and, and anything, it's like we struggle sometimes to come up with new new cigars, new whiskeys, stuff like that. So I think eventually we're gonna go to you know like and Nate's been kind enough. He was talking about it tonight before the podcast that he's worked up like a spreadsheet that'll be easy to add to. And it's, it's based on week, so if we have, I think something that we might be able to really start developing here going forward in the near future is picking some cigars that we've already smoked and featured 
and, and other whiskeys that we've already drank and featured. And revisited. But, but not revisited together, actually taking, hey, based on what we recall from these, this one might pair with, you know, episode 31 cigar might pair with episode 52 whiskey. Yeah, exactly. And, and go back to it and try to find some pairings that we can encourage you all to, uh, to really kind of pick up. And if you're going to have a, a night where you're looking for something that's going to pair well together, see if we're right on with that. I would like to be added to that too, Nate, if you don't mind. I haven't sent it out yet. <laughs> I, I finished compiling the list. I just haven't sent it to you guys yet. Right, right. I, no, I appreciate all your hard work, Nate. It's yeah. amazing. Thank yeah. you. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, think, I, I think all in all, I think this is a decent pairing as I'm getting into it further. Yeah. And, and smoking a Corona Gorda, I mean, I know we're talking a lot, but I'm, I'm barely, I'm not even quite halfway through it. I mean, Nate's so not as you're halfway, Jake. Nate's back there, not not speaking as much, obviously behind the camera, but he's already almost like he's he's three right about a third left. left. Yeah, uh, yeah, third left. Yeah, exactly. See, I'm finding halfway through that it's blinding the or it, it's overpowering the whiskey now. The whiskey's kind of just gone away. Do you still there. have that finish though of the whiskey? Yeah, like, that, that sweetness kind of lingering. Let me do it one more time. Hang on. Yep. We're gonna save it real quick. Facebook. Nate's coming in for round two here. There you are. And you come back with your uh, opinion. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Now I got that. Now I got the finish back. Maybe maybe it was because I stayed away from the whiskey there for a second. Could have been. But definitely this. I'm, I'm, I'm getting now what you were saying, Steve, about the, the, the spice in the classic, you know, this isn't Kentucky, but Kentucky hug is coming together back. What? <laughs> no, <laughs> what do you like about I have to that? Add, at this point, I just give you guys shit about saying that. Oh. Nate, Nate fulfilled it, I think, on one of the episodes that, you know, since he was subbing for you, that he, he threw out the Kentucky hug. I forget which one that the was. The new Riff Ride. The new Riff Ride, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He was all about that Kentucky Hug. Hey. In your honor. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it. That's a, it's a real thing. You guys can Kentucky Hug later if all you want, you know? <laughs> hey, it's good. It is good. Well, so with this, you know, going into this 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 podcast, it's, it, it's interesting. And, and Jake, you can, you can shut me down or I can edit this out so you'll see it on the Facebook Live. But, you know, something that, you know, we, we've been... No, I don't. It's not a struggle. It, it, it's more or less as we go through the different phases of the year, different life phases, things that we're we're going through. Um, with with Jake being off the podcast for for a few weeks there, and we were we were holding it down with the help of uh, Nate and Dustin, and then our guests as well. This was a great opportunity for us to, in a sense, and that was where it came time to recenter. And I thought about uh, you know even we could we could rename this one when we were coming up with the, the topic this week, but it's like light up the cigar, like pour a drink, light up a cigar, take time to recenter. Like, you know, kind of the whole, Yeah. there's so much behind that, that terminology of time to recenter with, with what we do with this, this podcast and what we do on our Wednesday nights and, and with all of you guys out there, uh, it, it is that it is, you know, you, you sit down, pour a drink. I, I put it on all the ones that we post as far as the, the, the audio. Yeah. You know, sit down, pour a drink, light up, join us in the garage. And that's really a big part of this is that all of the different aspects is kind of that. And, and then talking, you know, talking with the conversation um, is all about recentering because as we went through this and we were getting back on the same page, I mean, I will say in, in things that have been going on in your life, Jake, it, you're, you're off kilter a bit. I'm off kilter at times. We're all, we'll, we all go through that. Where we're off kilter. We're, I think we go down different, as you go down that path, and we talk about the, the balance a lot. Yeah. So when we're doing this, we're doing the pairings even of, of what we're doing is that you, you kind of want to just in, in take a drink of water or you always you know flush your glass, if you will. You know, it, it's that recentering. It's, it's taking it back. I bet people think I'm just like pounding drinks, like when I do that <laughs> on live. They, <laughs> like they, they look away for a second while I'm pouring water, water in into the glass and they're just like, he's down like three ounces. No wonder he's acting stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Little they know, you're, you're dead sober. No. Um, no, I, I think with the, the recentering part of it, it's, it's that path that you're going down 
no matter what the topic is, what other aspect of life or just, you know, what you're dealing with, Jake or anyone else out there, myself included, because because I go through it too, you know, personally, uh, relationship-wise, work-wise, career-wise, all that stuff, is that, you know, you, you kind of have to bat yourself back on the path, you know, you're going down the yellow brick road type thing, and then you start going a little, little too, a bit too far left, you know, whether it be a, a certain emotion, whether it be a certain aspect of your life taking over, um, you know, like the work hard, play hard thing with this, this whiskey is a great example of it, is that, you know, there's times where I'll catch myself that, you know, I'm, I'm feeling run down, I'm feeling not myself, it's because I, I wasn't eating as, as well as I should, it's not, I wasn't sleeping as well, I was drinking too much, you know, too many of the later nights within about a 7 to 10 or, or 14 day period, yeah. you know, I, I don't take the time for myself to just kind of go home, stay in, maybe not even talk to anyone, yeah. you know, just have that, that moment of I need to get myself back in the middle of the path. Well, that's a great. I, do you mind if I stop you right there? Go ahead. Yeah. That's cool. that's a great point. Just because of what, you know, not talking to anyone. Yeah. Like Steve knows that there's like at least like I try to have at least one day like where I I don't do anything, um, and that that means either shutting off my phone or like not having any responsibilities because we all know that we all have way way too many responsibilities throughout our day and through our weeks. So I, I think with this topic, it's great the fact that we were just on Whiskey Business yeah. because it was a nice recentering moment for us because it wasn't, it to me, it took a weight off of my shoulders and off of our shoulders as a pair because it we don't have to think about a topic. We just went in, we were ourselves. We're not trying to be a face in front of the camera or you know always be constantly talking because that's the point of the podcast um and, and that for me that was a nice recentering moment and i think when you know we all have responsibilities constantly in, in our lives are always growing there's new things added and, and it, there's hardly ever many things that get taken away so the older that i get i just notice that shit keeps getting added it doesn't mean that they're bad <laughs> yeah at all it just means that you have more responsibilities as you grow up grow older at it doesn't matter what age but i think that it's important with this topic to understand that for me at least that i can't take everything always so seriously and it's funny that i say that because last week we were just talking about with Andy, like moving forward, yeah, and I just was talking about like how I almost have to be mad to be able to do anything. Where I have, I have to have something that goes wrong for it to motivate me. And I don't. I think you know, going into this week and being on Dino's show, I'm with a completely different uh, outlook on the way I thought about last week. So. I think that it's important for me, especially and for others, to just not take situations too seriously, especially with endeavors, business endeavors, or, you know, it, it's like, I, I, I hate to keep bringing it back up, but the fact that we were on Dina's podcast, no, like, dude, I, we I had a blast. With you. I agree with We you. had a blast. And, and as it's as because, expected, we had too good of a time. Yeah, and, and it's because we didn't have to overthink anything. We just reacted. And so that, I mean, there's a lot of value to owning or having a endeavor like this podcast like the way that we do things yeah and just not take it too seriously I, I, I you know we're trying to build this thing into something where we enjoy it but it also makes us a, a little bit of capital because it does take time out of our days and out of our lives but I think it's important to understand that it's this is supposed to be fun and this is our recentering moment and that's why I'm glad that it's just you and I tonight. No, I think it's I think that's definitely a, a, a positive of, of tonight. And, um, you know, last week, you, we, if you guys go back and listen, it was a good podcast um, about moving forward over just moving on. And uh, Jake and I talked a lot about it afterwards, and, and there were, um, you know, as as you'd expect when you're you're being creative with another individual, and you guys are you know you're you're in relationships. There's a lot of that too, you know, and personal and professional relationships, 
there are times where you're not gonna see eye to eye or you get to that, um, not saying that we were in it, but like in a rut or you're in a, a, a standstill or like I said earlier with the, the metaphor of the path, you know, it's you, you, you find yourself, you, you kind of, you started veering off because that's kind of, you were leaning and I think there's a, a bit of a snowball effect sometimes if you're not careful and you don't stay in control of that. Yeah. Because the, the emotion that you're, you're dealing with or the, 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 the path that you're on with the business venture or whatever it is, sometimes if you, you got just like, you know, talk, talk about blinders, mm -hmm. sometimes it, it feels like you just have one on. So like the right blinders on and you see all this over here to your left, you know what yeah. I mean? And you're like, yeah, no, let's go full steam over here. And it's like, you're, you're missing some things over here that could be either outside opportunities or outside threats, but all of a sudden you, you've gone down too far one way and that, you know, I think that's when we look back, when, when I looked back at last week's podcast, it was, it was a, uh, um, a worthwhile conversation. It was a tough conversation that Jake and I had on both sides of it about the fact of um, kind of where, where each of us were at in our, our own personal lives. And I think that kind of came across in the podcast for, for better or worse. I thought, it was a, I thought it was a good one. Like I said, I encourage you guys to go check out episode 71. Andy was a, a great guest. Um, but I, I, I will absolutely echo what, what, what Jake's saying is being on Dino's was a chance for us to kind of do this, but not have that responsibility. Obviously, we want to represent ourselves well. Uh, he's got a, a pretty big following there. We're honored to be a part of it and be a part of two episodes. Um, and, and to have him asking questions after he complimented our, our podcast, being on it as a guest, yeah, you know, we keep hearing this thing where it's like, hey, you know, like they have real conversations, they have these these talks that everyone has, but they're just putting it out there. You know, you're putting it out there. It's a Facebook Live. You're doing it on the audio, and you're bringing people in in the garage, having conversations, and also having the feedback from people as we're doing, it, which is again, I think a very different thing. Yeah, and, and it keeps the podcast rolling, in my opinion. But the recentering moment too is under you know, it as much as uh, you know we love each other and we want to do this podcast the best we can. I think sometimes people get in each other's ears, and then the recentering moment is just being by yourself and understanding that you have to do you even alongside someone else. Absolutely, Does that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's. The, so there's two sides to that, I'd say, when you're looking at uh, trying to get back in, you know, that balance, if you will, the recentering. Like, you can do it on your own, but as we talk about a lot uh, on, on this show, is that you, you should surround yourself with good people. And I, I will tell you that, that there, there is a somewhat of a saying, you know, it's, it, show me the people that you surround yourself with and, and, and I can show you your future. Yeah. And, and if you, you surround yourself with negativity or, or people that are negative, you, you surround yourself with positive people or people that are very, very active and, and, and keep the, the gas down a little bit, that, that rubs off on you, you know, and it, and it does. It, it, it takes you um, to a certain point. So it's nice to have that, that, that alone time and I, that's part of recentering, but I find for myself, surround yourself with, with good people and, and get like almost a reminder of, of what is important to you to help you get through positive times, negative times, no matter what it is, career-wise, um, or again, I mean, it's the same type of thing with, with the cigars and whiskey. I mean, if you just go in there blindly and have no education, you have no one giving you um, any feedback or, or advice, yeah. you're going in there just looking at the bottles and being like, I, I have no idea what I'm looking at. All right. You go into a cigar shop like, like Tinderbox at East and, and <laughs> You literally are just looking at labels and you're looking at colors. You guys can hear we're having yet another storm tonight. So uh, I broke my code, man, for tonight. I used my lighter. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Hiroshi. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It's all right. It's butane, so you're all right. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I had something recently where, you know, you don't realize things are throwing you off kilter. You know, so, so, so Liz, my my girlfriend, um, who we live together and. And her brother was in town. I think I might have mentioned it on a previous podcast, but uh, it, it's something as I was, I was very happy to have him stay with us. And he was kind of floating around, but he's kind of this was his, his his base while he was here. You know, he kind of he had our spare bedroom. He had all that stuff uh, in the spare bedroom. And Did you mean to say base? No, I was gonna say base camp, but I figured I wouldn't say that because of the army thing. <laughs> But uh, no, this was his, his, his home base. This was, this was where he kind of set up his, his stuff and, 
you know, and stuff was in the shower, like this, the, this, the hall, uh, bathroom and shower. Um, you know, he, he had his, his, his bedroom all set up and everything like that. But, you know, he's, he's 21 years old, and so some nights he'd be hanging out with buddies down on campus, and he'd just crash at a, a friend's house. He'd right. crash at mom's house, dad's house, all that stuff. But when it came down to it, it's like for about three weeks, we had a house guest. And, and it, it was not a negative thing. It wasn't necessarily, it was more positive than anything. But once he went back to Texas, as much fun as it was to have him here, I'd come home and there'd be people here, you know, stuff like that, where it was just enough out of the norm that that after he's gone, I do miss hanging out with him. And I know Liz does as well. And it's going to be another six months or so before he gets to leave again. But I know that was throwing you like that was like tipping your well, I think spectrum like way over. Well, I tell you, it's what I said earlier. It's like you know, even the nights, it's like after you know, we, we do the podcast nights, and sometimes I, I, I push it too hard, you know, as far as that, or not even realize it. Uh, Doug says thunder. Yeah, I know it's uh, definitely thundering out there. I wonder if it sounds like a. I bet it sounds great on this mic. It right? could. I mean, they're all watching on the, it's the, a very, the camera there, but uh, very nice uh, bathtub white. Yeah. Bathtub cigar, if you're able to do that. <laughs> but I will say, you know, it's one of those things where, it, you know, when you are entertaining in a sense, I could have just, there was one night I just went to bed, but when there were other nights where they were, you know, in the garage, hanging out, having a couple drinks, and I just wanted to go to bed, well, I also said, all right, I'll, I'll sit down for one. And then you get conversations, as you do, you know what I mean? And then next thing you know, it's like, well, I went to, wanted to go to bed at 11, and now it's 1.30 in the morning. And I was already tired walking into the day. Now at the end of this day, now it's, that's that whole thing where all of those things, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to have it come across that it's not nice having a house guest. And it doesn't matter if you, your in-laws or a friend that needs a place to crash or, or family staying with you from out of town. It's, yeah. it's, it's typically, most of the time, at least for me, it's very nice, it's cool to have someone else there. And once they're gone, you, you see him as this, he is very, very, Regulated, I think interrupted due to an emergency alert on your phone, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's still going right. all right on this, yeah. And I, yeah, emergency alert. So if the lights go out, <laughs> this might not. be the first one where we might have to come back to it. Yeah, but no, Corey's one of those guys that are very regimen style, he's always doing his thing, he sticks to it no matter what. And uh, I remember when I was working for him, when he would go either on vacation or his little family trips. He would always say how much he loved being with his family because that was like his only time that he took away from business to actually recenter his family life. Yeah. But his personal goals took a back seat, and I know that it it was like that scratch that, or that itch that he could never scratch when yeah. he was on vacation. Yeah. So I, I I totally get what you're saying. I don't know. I've just never. I've been like that through football, and I think that has been a big problem for me just because jumping from whether job to job to job, it doesn't, like, there's no, I, I, I don't have a foothold in anything right now. So I think as much as, you know, Liz's brother being in here for three weeks and being here with you, Steve, throwing you off a little bit, I think that is just as much the same as me with just life in general and, and, and the job stance because there's no foothold to have a routine. Yeah. Like I could create a routine, but once there's a new job, it's just gonna shift that right over. So I don't even start that yet. I, I try to, right? But it's not It's not the most, the, the biggest thing with my focus right now, so. Yeah, and Doug says having a goal helps you helps to get you there and I think oh, that's, that's a big part of it is I mean like again no matter what so so you, if you're going through a, a transition in your job and you're trying to do that I've heard a lot of people go and I did I tried to do it when I was when I was uh, unemployed after losing my job uh, six seven years ago is that you try to keep the good habits right you try to, you yeah. try to keep waking up at the, the regional times if you had a job you search for jobs, you do all that stuff. Same thing with like a relationship, you know, like when you are single, when you, you find yourself getting that new job, that new relationship, or at least that that that, that recentering balance of everything, is when you, you, you know, you're, you're not, I'm not, this is not about you, Jake, it's like, but with those situations is that you can go down that emotional path of, you know, not wanting to do anything, you know, because you went through a breakup and you want to like just sleep or you want to, 
you know, drink or you want to feel sorry for yourself, you want to be by yourself, you want to be surrounded by people all the time, it's when you get the big one. When you get that that opportunity to really recenter it and you, you're around people and yet when you're by yourself, you're, you're okay, you're enjoying being by yourself, you're, you're eating healthy, you're, you're doing all these things that you know that when you are in your prime you know, state, you, you keep doing those things when you're not, or you almost force yourself yeah. based on the fact that sometimes when I look at this, you know, recentering and stuff like that, typically it's not, you're not creating anything necessarily. You're, you're, you're going back to, you know, six months ago when I was feeling better or I was feeling happier. I wasn't, like for me, it's like when I, when I was sleeping better, when I wasn't staying up more nights, like when, when, when Jack was here, you know, it's like right. I stayed up even more nights later than I wanted to because you're, you're, you feel like you have to Because he's not doing nothing. Yeah, he's, 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 here he's off for three weeks, right? Yeah. So, it's one of those things that I, I had to remind myself kind of when, and I've done this before, is when I was the, the fittest, when I was the happiest, when I was sleeping, I was able to stay up and, and, and drink and, 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 you know, within reason and get a little less sleep, but then I'd still be fine. What was I doing differently than I am right now? And that's something yeah. that, that, that I had to remind myself of how I was eating, how I was spending some time, you know, nights in by myself, you know, it's, it's I something I think there's that, a lot of value in just being by yourself for a second. I really do. And I, 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 there's, there's two ways that we can go down this road or people can go down this road in general. And, and I think everyone either has the route that everyone has their happy place where they can, yeah. I, you know, I kind of imagine a, you know, if it's someone, I don't know why, but I can imagine a good friend of mine just being on her horse in her backyard. Like, that's her happy place. Okay. Like, so, and, and mine is either sitting on my deck alone or with my family, but I'm still in the company of family and friends, but I'm not actually in, conjoined within the conversations or I'm not, I'm still by myself. So. I think, and then I think for you, Steve, and I think for a lot of people, they need to be around people that, they're, they're good people, like what you said at the very beginning, where it's, you know, I, 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 I'm more centralized. What, what do you think that you, like, what would be your happy place between, or is, it, is the routine your happy place? I would say it's the routine, but I mean, along with that, like you're saying, for me it is. I'm talking about like a time to reflect, because that's the only way that I think that a routine helps me, but I think like a time to reflect is, you know, it coincides with that recentering. Yeah. I would say so. Yeah, the recentering, and this is something where you can you can choose that kind of self-reflection moment, or that's probably gonna be a big one coming. You saw a big flash of lightning. I do a lot of self-reflection. I think you know that. <laughs> so that that's what I'm getting at. This again for 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 me, uh, and for those of you who can relate, it's it's again the, the balance of that. So if you're if you're you're a, a person that likes to be by themselves and, and, and do all that, be you know ah, alone a lot. Got the match. That's 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 all well and good. You guys got to know your own balance. Not everyone's the same. There's no right answer to this. But when we talk about recentering, it's not. That's, this will be an interesting audio. Uh, so believe it or not, we are not outside. We are doing it in, in my garage as, as usual. So it's still human. Uh, very humid. Very humid. Uh, turns out it's storming, so <laughs> uh, maybe that'll cut the humidity. But so everyone's got to find that, and that's, that's part of the recentering. I will say uh, that it's not necessarily, like recentering is, is, is a constant process, but it's not an all the time thing that you are like constantly catching yourself and doing that. It's, it's, it's about finding, to your point, the happy place, but for me it's not, you know, and it's not the literal thing. It's not just like this one moment, my happy place. It's like in, um, uh, happy Gilmore. You know, happy's place is when he closes his eyes and, and smoking hot blondes and modern family comes out, two pitchers of beer, and she's in lingerie, and you know, someone's riding around on a, a tricycle and you know, all that stuff. It's not like just this one instance. It's not being on a horse like your friend necessarily. Like, get that part. And that's a, a, an opportunity to maybe have that, that, that meditation or that, that self uh, reflection. But for me, it's a, a constant. Um, 
struggle yet, uh, not really struggle because that has a negative connotation for me, but it's about keeping, again, on that path. But I think so you're, you need both. So if, when you said your routine maybe, is pushing yourself, though. It, I mean, which is fine. fine. It's fine. Uh, that, that's but that's your happy place. But yeah, I, I would say is, sometimes, is, is sometimes pushing yourself. Well, it's not. It's constantly not as a negative. I mean, no, like no. going to the gym, like working on something. Yeah. Like so that. so that's all part of it. When I say recenter myself, it's not just that's the, the so that's part of it. If I find myself getting too into you know, eating healthy, I miss out on opportunities. When I get too far down the path of like, all I'm thinking about while I'm at work is going to the gym. Cause I've had those types in my life where all I'm thinking about is making sure I, I get the right amount of protein. I, I get the, you know, the, the right macros and I, I make sure that I'm really, everything I put in my body is for the, the greater good. And then all I'm thinking about is what I'm gonna do in the gym. I've had those moments in my life. Yeah. And I'm not, we've had a podcast about being present and, and that's sometimes where, where I think that people can go too far down one way or the other. So your yeah. focus yeah. 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 Is, yeah. is not balanced. It's not all that stuff. So that's where I'm saying, like, as far as, like, being, I like to, a lot of times on my days off, like, I will, I will not leave the house. I, I don't, like you say, push myself. I need to have those moments where I realize that I'm running myself ragged and for, for what purpose? Because... There are times where you just get caught in that routine. You get caught in that. And Nate said something on there. Um, you know, a routine can be good, but but a rut can be negative. Um, you know, it was one of those things that Doug on, on the. And I appreciate all you guys staying in this uh, and giving us this feedback. Doug said, you know, my new job is in a technology I know little about. That motivated me and made me realize just how deep a rut I was in. Read what he said at the end. Go down to the end the most of the recent comment. The yeah. Most recent comment. The rut was draining my desire to succeed. Became complacent. So again, that's sometimes. So he when found you, something new to learn and focus. Well, yeah, and I mean, recenter on. Correct. Which would well, be he really, he, some, a new job. A new job, but sometimes you don't even realize that you're off kilter. Is my point. Okay. Because of the rut, because you think you're doing well, but yeah, you can wake up and realize that you're being complacent. You're you're spending too much time in a social atmosphere, as you, you were saying, and, or you can spend too much time by yourself. But again, that mix, that medium, the happy medium, the yeah. happy balance is different for everyone. Everyone is wired differently. Everyone needs different things to, to be productive, to be happy, all that stuff. But I think that it's a, it's a combination of, of a lot of different things all meshed together. And that's where I was saying earlier is that sometimes my, my, my center point or my balance is different than yours, Jake. It's different than Nate in the garage. It's different than people out there listening. What, what continues to drive me, make me more comfortable, and that's not the, the rut comfortable. I'm saying like it, it helps me be at ease while I'm doing all of these things. Yeah. That's where I realize sometimes my focus is, is drawn elsewhere. The percentage that, that makes me happy or makes me most productive in every arena in my life can sometimes, and that's where, going back to that, that previous podcast, I am not being present in some of the actions I'm doing because I am not centered, I am not balanced, I, am, I, I, need, a, I need, to, need to realize that the stress level is up, the anxiety is up, the sleep is down, the food I'm putting in me is wrong, my workouts aren't as good, Right. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking more than I should, I'm smoking more than I should, I'm being more lazy than I normally am, like there's, there's all different ways that when you look at like, say like your, your, your flavor wheel that we talk about, you know, for whiskeys, <laughs> it's like when I look at that stuff, it's fine if, you know, your palate wants to have more honey or more oak, more fruit, more whatever, but those are your favorites for a reason. Right. You know, see those trends. Other people want it to be right smack dab in the middle where everything is like that. Other people want to be working more, but then sometimes that can get into a, a problem sometimes just because you're working so much, then all of a sudden you're missing out on other other things. And you realize that all of a sudden now I'm getting more stressed at work. Now I'm getting more stressed when I'm around my family, or around my friends. I'm more stressed when I get home. It's because I come home and because I'm working so much, my house isn't clean. You know, there's stuff everywhere. Now it's kind of cluttered and now I get more anxiety, I get more stress because I'm not taking the time. And it's like, that's when I, just something as simple as that. It's like, some, some, some people may have to, I know I have to. You take a day and you just say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to go nuts and clean the house head to toe, but I'm, I'm going I'm to clean the bathroom. 
you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, or I'm gonna mow the lawn, or I'm gonna sweep up, I'm gonna run the vacuum when I get home, and I'll make it a point because all I really wanna do is go home and go to sleep, but tonight, I'm at least gonna run the vacuum so when I wake up tomorrow, I know that the carpets are clean. But I think you had in a, it was kind of at the beginning of that, um, where you ex you're adding, I think we're adding in an element, which is what other people think that can also drive off your kilter. Okay. And, and so when you're already at that place where you've reflected, you know you're not in your routine, you're not in, you're not balanced, but then you add in other people's perspectives of yourself. Yeah. Then you're even, like you said, you have more anxiety. You have more of a reflection on yourself when you don't need to be, and it throws you off even more. Absolutely. And I think that's when, for me at least, that's when the time alone in those meditation aspects in that 10 to 15 minutes, like uh, just yeah, Michael. Yeah. He just he said that he was saying that he meditated for 10 to 15 minutes a day, and that adds in his reflection time, and it allows him to recenter. Yeah. And I think that, for me at least speaking, what happens is, is that I know I'm already off center, but then I have people saying the same exact thing, and even though I know how many times I tell them I'm, I know I am, and I'm working on it, it still, you, you can't unsay, and you can't unhear, the stuff that you hear. So it even, and I'm not trying to go on this whole, uh, you know, negative aspect, but these are the things that you, as a person, need to truly think about and how it's affecting you even more so. So if you're someone like me, that if you know you're already off kilter, you have people in your ear, you understand what's happening, you, I think, need to either be by yourself or find out whatever you were doing before you felt that way. That's my and then, I know, and I'm the other way. So, I, you know, it's understanding that there's two and even more ways to look at this, but it's understanding that you are in that arena and how do you get out of it and it's either by what Steve said, or if you're someone like me and you need to be by yourself, or it's someone like Doug or Doug Ruff Ruffalo. I just said this last week. I need someone to just give me a shot. Doug got his shot, and this stuff happens all the time. But it's also where you know how do you set yourself up for that shot too. So I, I think that the recentering point comes with that reflection and knowing where you're yeah. at within. Yeah the whole thing and whether you need to be by yourself or find out like you what you said Steve about the whole what was your routine before if that's what kind of person you are when you were happy go back to when you were happy or maybe we're not even talking about unhappiness in happiness you're just trying to balance your life the recentering is just the balance whether like you said Steve whether you know you're going out with friends too much or you're trying to balance way too much because a lot of people do try to balance way too much on their plate so it's okay to say no to things and yeah absolutely it's okay to when you're out with friends and you're you know having a dinner and saying like hey you know i need to go i don't really want to go and you already feel bad because you don't want to leave and you feel bad because your friends don't want you to leave but it's like this is what i need to do and you have to understand that no you're absolutely right and i'll ask you this because you know you keep going back to, you know, needing to be by yourself, right? And, and, and yes, I think there is. I mean, John Michael said, you know, he takes 10, 15 minutes a day. Like I said, sometimes I'll realize that I am, I am running myself ragged. And so like, I take, I, I say, no, you know, Hey, you want to go up to the shop? You want to go out and have some drinks? You want to, you know, go do whatever, you know, it's, it's no, I'm, I'm good. I'm not going to make it out today. Or I'm not going to do it. I, I have those moments where I need to be by myself. What I'm saying, when I said that's a big one for me, is for someone like you, Jake, uh, you keep bringing that up, and this is just an honest question, is when you are at your best, are you spending the majority of your time 
by yourself or is this your opportunity to you're saying you need a little bit more self-reflection so therefore you're going to spend more time alone in the hopes that that things will recenter based on your self-reflection your time alone taking a step back from some of the social circles from the public's eye or is this your happy place that you I'm not saying like on the horse thing I'm saying like this is your happy life balance is when you spend more time by yourself as opposed to being around people and, and doing all that. That's 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 what I'm Yeah, thinking. so it's kinda like a two part question. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. No, so I, I, I think the first part of that question was whether or not like is do I need to spend more time by me by myself or not or is that just a reflection? When of you were half like when I go back to that point of the fact that, that you know, when I, when I find myself or, or, or having more stress, more anxiety, I'm, I'm off kilter. I'm not centered. Yeah. And, and again, John Michael says it's a constant struggle. You know, it's striving for an equilibrium or, or recenter is a constant search and maybe I'll never get it perfect, but it's more about the journey of striving for it. And I, I, I agree with that. So it, it's when, though, when you look back, say you are off kilter and, I, and I'm saying to people like, go back six months, go back to, to a point where you remember that you, that things were going well in your mind. You felt healthy, you felt happier for the most part. I'm not saying it's always this euphoric, I'm always happy thing. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying you, you were feeling good, you woke up feeling good, you looked forward to the day, whether it be your, your job, your relationship, your your personal routine. When you look at that, is it more time on your own or is it more like a balance? Is it like you had like John Michael saying that he does it 10 to 15 minutes a day or for me it's like, about once a week, once every two weeks, I realize that I'm gonna have to spend, I don't even realize it, but it's just like, I'm like, I wake up, I'm like, no, nope, not not leaving the bed, you know, on my day yeah. off. Like, I'm yeah. not leaving the house. I'm ordering pizza, and I might go to the gym tonight if I feel like it, but other than that, I don't even typically, and you guys may know that for people that know me, there are certain days on my days off that uh, I don't respond immediately on text, or I don't yeah. respond, I don't pick up the phone. And I mean, there is that, that opportunity that I have that, more once in a while, yeah. Every couple of weeks, which I'm, which so I'm for not you, that's way. what I'm asking. So I'm I'm take it off of me. I'm saying like when you were at your happiest yeah. with all that, or when you were at, at, at ease with everything, is that what you're saying? You need more alone time, or you're, yeah. you're that kind of person? Yeah, I'm that kind of person because when I'm around people as well as you know, Steve, I'm listening to my surroundings. Okay. Whether it be people that want to give me advice, I'm like. I'm always listening within our shop. I, I actually Absolutely. I actually take uh, great honor in being able to work at the tender box and to be there and to listen to the mistakes that people have made in their lives and also the great gains that they've made in their lives, whether it be business or life. And so there's a lot of knowledge that a young person like me can learn in a place like that, and especially in an older gentleman's setting. So, but going back to the question, for me, when I was my happiest, you know, it was, I, I actually was alone. You know, being an only child and just having football okay. and just doing that, other than that, I would be by myself. It doesn't mean that I think, well, I'm sorry, let me take that back. It doesn't mean that I think that's when I was happiest, but that was what I was more familiar with. More at ease. More at ease. Okay. So I think that's why I associate that with the happiness. Now there was a, what was this? I wanted to add in the second part of the question where if I spend more time reflecting, I don't want it to seem like all I'm doing is beating my head against the wall within that reflection time. No, 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 no. Because I think that that can be a, a deep dark hole like what Doug and some of the people on our chat has been saying is that you can dive farther down into the rut if you're not careful when you are someone like that. You have to verbally tell yourself that this, I'm not going to think negatively. This is going to be a reflection time for only positive thoughts. And sometimes you have to look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you're good enough if you are farther down that hole. But what I'm saying is, is the most important part is when you are spending more time reflecting and being by yourself, if you're someone like me, 
that's it. That's the most important time to not be negative with yourself. So that's a threat. It is a threat. Okay. It is a threat. But that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I think that when we're both talking about being more centered and recentering ourselves, it's understanding who you are as a person and what type of person you are. Yeah. And I look at you know if, if you need to recenter sometimes, or like I, I like go back to relationships. I know sometimes it, it's it's really easy to. And I'm, I'm not taking away from that. Like I said, I think self-reflection and, and time by yourself, as I've, I've mentioned, is is very important. I think that's that's a valuable thing as long as and it, sometimes it's just you need more sleep. So it's literally like yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go to sleep. You know what I mean? And, and again, it's just keeping it keeping it on the point, right? So it's always the fact that you want to when you're when you're doing that reflection by yourself, no matter how how long it takes, and you know, uh, Doug. Uh, Ruffalo had some good points there of, of something that was very important where he's talking about a, an actual moment where he says, you know, my marriage was in trouble in a two hour period by myself to reflect in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee gave me a clarity that saved my marriage and turned things around What a me. beautiful setting, Doug. My God. Perfect. Well, and, and even more so, I think it's, it's a, a beautiful sentiment that, that he took that time to do that two hours yeah for him to do that and maybe he does that now more on a regular basis whether things are like that's a a more negative or troubling incident that 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 self-reflection that recentering has now helped him now i don't know if doug does that on a regular basis even when things are good that he does this whole thing where you know you do that like what john michael's saying again to bring that up that he does it on a regular as a habit yeah as something that you know i don't necessarily i don't want to go I don't want to go too far off the path. I don't want to, yeah. you know, deal with things where before you, you know, you know it because I'm not paying attention to, to the, the, the center of the path or the balance that I'm off to the left too far. I'm off to the right too far. Yeah. And now I've got to do this moment of crisis where I have to take the time to just recenter. Or is it something that once you learn from, once you get that recentering focus point that you actually can stay on that? That, that moment the best you can until something outside starts pulling you elsewhere again. I mean, that's that's where I like the, the constant struggle. When we talk about this recentering for the balance, it's it's the work life, it's the, the personal life, it's the the relationships in your life, whether it be romantic or friendships or family. It's all of that stuff that that I find myself struggling with that I don't see my family even in town enough. And I find myself feeling at times missing out. And then I, I try to go do it. And again, life gets in the way a lot of the time. Yeah. Schedules get in the way a lot of times. Well, and, and I think too, I, I look at it this way, and and whether you're, you know you're you're spiritual, you're out there listening, you're you're spiritual or you're not spiritual. Um, when I was in college, we had a you know a Bible study, and one of the things that we talked about, and it was called Athletes in Action. Yeah. And it was kind really? of yeah, and it, it's actually a huge organization in in uh, Kutch, part of Ohio Wesleyan's athletes in action, great man, but he said something one to me, or said something to me one day, and it was interesting, um, and we would do these uh, recentering moments every week, you know, looking back on it, that's exactly what they were, because it was just me and Kutch, so um, yeah. it's, at that time, what he said to me was, is, you know, that Jake, there's always, did you notice that when times are bad, that you that you pray more or less, or if times are good, do you pray more or less? And most of the time, I think the answer is is that you know if you're if you're spiritual and you're religious, that you, you pray more when times are bad, and and then you neglect it when times are good. Much like so, the, the self reflection we're talking yes, about, yeah, yeah. Those, those so alone that, moments. So right? that's what I'm like when it, that reminded me of that when you're talking about Doug and asking whether he does this anymore and he says that he tries to, right? Yeah, that's but a great so, comment. Yeah, so I think that's in, in an interesting point of view because if if someone does something when times are bad, they should also do it when times are good. Yeah. And, and that's that routine that you're talking about, yeah. right? Because, in, in, and honestly, when I graduated from college, that's, I really, really tried to hone in on that where I wasn't just praying when times are bad. I was praying when times are good. I was praying that I was thankful for things that have been happening to me that I was happy about. Yeah. Not when, you know, stuff hits the fan and 
I'm just sad and I'm praying for, you know, broader shoulders and a bigger back to put the world on, you know, to wait on. Yeah. I, you know, I was keeping that, that equilibrium set with that. So I think, I think that there's recentering moments that can either be in your head, but there's also things that happen to us too. I'll add that in. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that can throw people off kilter, but the most important part is, is understanding who and what kind of person you are and what makes you feel better. I'm not talking about cigars, I'm not talking about whiskey, I'm not talking about drugs. What what, right. what right. spiritually, what physically, what what gets your clock ticking no, but this, when times are good and bad. Yeah. Well and, and, and but to that point you talk about drugs and everything else like the stuff you put in your body, man. We, we talked about it a few weeks back about supplements and, and eating and all that stuff and, and getting your blood levels checked. I mean that's yeah. something that I think is also where we, I don't want to let it be neglected in the conversation briefly is that, you know, you eat, you eat a bunch of donuts, you eat a bunch of pizza, right? Or you have what people call a cheat meal. You, you have these you burger and fries and stuff like that. That's, that's fine. You know what I mean? But if you realize that you're doing that all the time before you realize it, you don't feel as well. Nope. Cause you're eating poorly. And you don't look good. You don't look good. You don't feel as well because you don't look good. Now. That's a short term high. Yeah, it's a short-term high. So I mean, it is. It's about that. It's it's constantly finding that again that balance. But even, uh, even for me, like you, you know, I'm sure that if if people are talking about reflecting, and we are in this world of cigars and whiskey, that people can become, you know, closet drinkers. And it, it's like when, when in those times of reflection, especially for me, I make it a point not to drink because that's good. We, we do do this. This is our life. I, I think so. You know, I may sit down and have a cigar, but that's a little different than sitting there and going through a quarter, half a bottle, or for some people, a full bottle. Well, just drowning their sorrows. Uh, yeah, and on the same note, though, I mean, if you are a drinker and you can have those nights where you know we all kick a bo- you know bottle down real quick, like that, that's that's fine as long as depending on what what mindset you're in. If you're there's home, also not a problem. <laughs> if you don't have to go anywhere and you're still happy and you're well, smiling. What I'm saying is instead that, of you know, uh, there's, there's no. I don't. I don't think there's a problem if you do come home and you're 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 doing well and your self reflection does involve or a routine does involve you know like yeah. a glass or two of of whiskey or wine and a cigar. Yeah. yeah. That's different than getting hammered and then sending out drunk text messages to your exes <laughs> and saying like. I'm sorry I wasn't better for you and all that stuff or you know like or or oh my god I need to smoke the most rare and expensive cigar in there you know to make me feel better that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about it does feel good though the same text out no 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 I, I think <laughs> talking that, about grabbing the rare cigar and grabbing that good bottle it does. Like you never take a drink out of it it does yeah it does it but does again, feel I mean, nice that's something that just you, you can combine that with the overall effort of the recentering or the, med- the, the meditation the the self-reflection or whatever it is. I mean, I think that's what a lot of this is about because yeah, I like that this conversation, thank you to all the guys and, and girls out on, on Facebook. I mean, we had, um, you know, Katie, she was saying, uh, she was asking questions. She asked, I mean, I love the conversations going on between you guys. So if you guys are listening to just the audio, if you're free on Monday nights, or I'm sorry, Wednesday nights. Um, <laughs> you're on Dino's. Yeah, it's on that schedule. There. Yeah. Huh. Um, but if you're on, if you're free between 7.30, 9.30, somewhere in that, that period, especially the second half, the conversations, you know, Katie said that, uh, let me find it here. You know, she said, I find for me when I need to recenter to recharge, I got to get out in nature, hiking, kayaking, walking trails, just out in the sun and away from the busy of people and work. It's her happy place. So, that's, again, that's, see, that's yeah, that horse. I think that's great. Yeah. Like I said, I think that's great. I think when you say happy place, for me, I, I think there is that purpose of where is your, your self-reflection spot or where to get away from it all. Uh, yeah. I also think that sometimes people's happy place is, is, is being in the moment. You know, there's people that like to be on stage or be active, be in the gym, be, um, you know, out in your yard. You know, and, and sometimes it's not even the fact that like, oh, I love being up. It's just a moment to reflect. For me, it's accomplishing something too. Like and then it's small, that's, that's great. If it's, if it's small tasks, like yeah. that I can get done, like I felt really good cleaning up my dad's boat before vacation. Yeah. That was, that was a nice moment. Well, I was tired, I was sweaty, it was hot out today. Yeah. 
and I felt a little bit accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> well, the conversation I was, I, was, I was talking about here, you know, so Katie, you know, was talking to John Michael, who we, we refer to a lot on this podcast, for those of you um, that have been, been with us the whole time, either on live or, or audio, but, you know, she asked, you know, do, do you have an app? You use an app, so this is the day and age where you were talking about athletes in action. Apps, man. You were talking about athletes in action. You were you even though you talk about being by yourself, that was a time in your life that you 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 relied on another person or people to to you know work together on some of this stuff. There's a Zen app, man. The meditation app. Have you ever seen that? I before? have. It's actually crazy. Do you know it? She asked, uh, "Do you use an app to guide your meditation?" I'm trying to get into guided meditation followed by journaling, and then John Michael said. Uh, Headspace to, to Katie. Yeah, you can find codes to get you a free month to try it out. Highly recommend. So yep. there, there are tools out there. And Doug says walking the dog for me. So I, I agree with the, the the being by yourself is something that is very important. I am of the opinion that also it's very important to do both. It's to to be by yourself to have that reflection to kind of get that recentering that meditation standpoint of of trying to reflect on as I said earlier. When were you, when are you the happiest? You know what what gives you that? You know, for you, it's accomplishing something. Like I what can I accomplish? And, I, and if I may, I think your space is the gym. I think I, th- you know, when I went and did workouts with you, I I think that is your your space. That is your zen. To, that is something. Yeah. So and, and I think that's a lot of people's zen, and that's great. But, but see, I think to recognize that and understand that it's not just the routine; it's the fact that it's the space. Of what you are in. Well, it is, and I know it's not just the like lifetime where I look, work out now. I was very happy at Power Check before that. I was happy at Worlds, and I've done it socially. I've done it by myself. I will say this: that to to speak to what gets you through some some tougher times, right? Yeah. Is is the gym got me through a lot of emotional struggle over the last decade, and I, I saw results from it, changing the way I ate and stuff like that. So one of the things that I'll say Sorry. with a lot of this stuff, like for, for, for John Michael and other people that, that have these routines of self meditation or what have you, to your point, that, that for me is one of my spots in my life that I can actually be able to reflect. And, and the workouts are similar, but they change a little bit. The music I listen to, or if I'm listening to a podcast, whatever it might be, but I have my headphones in. I've gotten used to working out by myself. But if someone wants to work out with me, I can definitely do that. But I'm still gonna have my headphones in until we talk. You're still but by to me, yourself. But to me, it's the fact that that was something that got me back on track. It got me back on the path. It recentered me. So one of the things I don't want to do with a lot, a lot of, a lot of people do this is that once things are like you're, you're when things are going better, like your prayer, is, well, your prayer isn't as much, or it, it stops, right? Your, your, your self-reflection, your the recentering moment that got you back in the right direction. I stop. You stop because, you know, you lose a few pounds, you start looking better in the mirror, you're like, all right, well, you know, I'm gonna start, you know, I eat a bad meal, oh, I'll eat another one, I'll eat another one, I just won't work out today. All of this stuff, it, it's, the, that, it's that, 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 that new routine. What got you there? What makes you in your, your balanced self? Mm-hmm. And to continue doing those things and actually grow off of those things too. I agree. I think it'll lead people down a a better avenue with keeping that that balance of the 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 good um, what would you call it exercises, <laughs> not just physically but right. mentally as well. Well, I mean, you got you know, you got golf is another one's being thrown out there. You know, it's their their happy place or whatever. It's their moment to be out there, and even though you might be frustrated with your games, the fact that you go out there, you know, people are get overworked or they're their life is demanding them too far one way or another, they realize at one point, you know, if you do look back, like what was making me happy was the fact that I was doing this or I was doing these few things that I can, yeah, I can squeeze in. I just need to put that on the schedule too. Yeah. And I think what a lot of these, everything that people have mentioned through this chat, yeah, they all have a similar stance in, 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 in common. And, and it's somewhere quiet in their mind, if you will. Like for you, it's it's listening to a you know, if I can imagine Ed Ed Milet or yeah. whatever music that you want to listen to, but it's still a quiet sound mind. 
whether it be Doug in the mountains, I mean, obviously that's that goes without saying. Yeah, or yeah, so a huge. Impact. So I, I think for most people, it's 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 neglecting the sound finally and understanding whether there's not there's no one in your ear there's nothing that you have to really think about it, yeah. it's you yourself in your own skin and I think a lot of these problems that we talk about where you know you me and everyone get tipped over and off balance there's 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 something there where it's it's just noise it's all noise it can be it and and, and that's where a lot of a mental issues derived from I think yeah so it can and I, I'll add to this though that there's the other opportunity that sometimes if you have a mentor out there or you have a like for this if you have a podcast that you listen to on a regular basis you and you mentioned one of the ones I listen to and I know there's people out there uh, that, that listen to this and they, they do send us messages they do thank us when we see them or they, they, they contact us um, that they get a lot from it I mean this can be something that is part of that, that recentering sometimes you need to be you either need to do anything in the spectrum of listen to something that's that's gonna like speak to you because you can get lost in your own thoughts and you know it's not always as effective if you don't have the answers you need some so a sounding board is the other side of it sometimes you need someone just to talk to and get your thoughts out I mean shit therapy is is a, a billion dollar business not only because it's something you can make money off of but there are people that do respond just like learners there's different types of learners out there, and I think there's different types of people that need different avenues, and sometimes a combination of it. You do need that self-reflection, that, that meditation side of it, but there are times where you need to have a sounding board. There's times you need to, for, 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 for me, not as much anymore, but sometimes you need to, I don't want to say shout it out that you're literally shouting in someone's face, but you need to have it out. Like You, you sit on some of the thoughts that are frustrating you, yeah. and sometimes... You know, people need to to really get the, the emotions out because that's what's bottled up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what's that's what the, the struggle is, or that's what's leading you down one side of the path. Because if I don't talk about it, then it'll hopefully go away. Well, chances are it's not going to go away if you are going down one side of the path or the other. And the thing that needs to be recentered is you either need to talk to someone you trust and you, you have their opinion, or you have that kind. And that's another thing where it's. If you have a mentor, and I encourage you guys to, to find a, a podcast, a book, an author, a, a person in your life, um, if need be a therapist, but I mean, you can have people in your life that you just have regular talks with. Again, going back, when you look six months, when you, you go back a, a year, whatever it might be, when you were at your happiest, and things aren't bad now, but you realize that something's off. Things are starting to build a little bit. That's the moment where you realize those things where, like, we were talking about the gym. Where you're talking about you, you, you spoke with that individual uh, and athletes in action back in, back in college. Those were those those regular routine mentors or sounding boards or people that are in your life that can complement your times alone and self reflection. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, to be completely honest, I, I hope that we have some questions because um, I I think this has been a great podcast, and even though it's been like the two of us, yeah, I mean it, it's a lot of it, it's involved. not it's not a bad thing for us to be before two hours either. <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> but I, I I think when I'm I'm recentering, I, I've gone over, and I don't want to completely reiterate it, but it it's so important to understand who you are as a person, and I think that comes with a lot of different experiences that you go through. I think it's it's important to try different things to figure out who you are, and then that will also help you answer yourself and help other people understand you more when you are in times of unbalanced. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, it's, like I said, like being alone, but I also really enjoy being in company, but also kind of... Uh, isolating myself mm -hmm. in, in other people's company. I, I don't know why I like that, but I think it, it adds a uh, familiarity yeah. for me, but also I can be within my own thoughts and I don't have uh, all, all this noise 
noises in my head. Yeah. It, it, I got a noisy head, man. There's a lot of a lot of things rolling. I, I believe it. So. Uh, you know, and one of the things that we didn't introduce, and, and, and I don't want to stretch this out at all, but uh, I've, I've talked about this in, in podcast past, and, and not not as much recently, but there's a, a business practice that, that many of you guys may be familiar with, but the SWOT analysis. Do you remember us talking about that? Yeah, but I don't know exactly what it stands for. So, so, so there's something, this could be something that you try to apply it to a little bit of that, that self-reflection or when you're talking to another person, even when things are going well, right? So it's, it's about always being prepared for the future or staying on the path, or if you're off the path, you know, this is a good way to look at it. But, but it's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So SWOT is S-W-O-T. And, <laughs> and strengths and weaknesses are basically things that you have control over. You know, some of your strengths in your life, some of your weaknesses in your life, and you can, you know, list that out or mentally list it out and all that stuff. But then you, you have the, the, the other side of it, which is outside factors, which are the opportunities and threats. So what are the opportunities when it comes to business, when it comes to your personal relationships, when you're, like, before you get in a rut, or if you realize you're in a rut, your relationship that you're in, I'm not saying you're tallying up, like, should you stay with this person or not? I'm saying, what are you doing well? What are you doing poorly in your mind yeah. and then what are some of the outside threats and, and opportunities that, that are out there that could affect these types of things Yeah, you know what I mean and, and how do you prepare for that and those are the times where you start thinking about like well maybe I should start saving more because you know what like if if you own a home or whatever and it's like the, the furnace goes out you know is this going to wreck me is this going to wreck my relationship my family is this going to like we can't go on vacation. We can't afford Timmy's, you know, baseball team or whatever because now I gotta buy a, a furnace. And, or do I save up while things are going well? Yeah. And we're doing things well. So all of a sudden, one of the weaknesses is saving money, which good is, and bad. It's a weakness, and then you hope to try to get that to the strength because of outside opportunities and threats. Yeah. If I save more money, turn that into a strength, then everything around me. You know, as far as my family, my job, everything else, like if, if I if I happen to have another opportunity, like, you know, Doug was talking about earlier, he had this opportunity for a job, and even if it was for maybe a little bit less money or whatever it might be, it's like, you know what, that's fine because in the bigger picture, I see that we've saved enough or we're in a good enough place right now that if I take this, it's in the long run, it's going to be good as opposed to being tied down to, no, I can't do it because of expense A, B, C, D, E, F. And it's a hard question to ask yourself, especially if it's a job that you know that you enjoy a lot more than a job that you absolutely. don't like, and you make more money at it. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I think it's <laughs> there's a lot of a confrontations that everyone can have with themselves, but you know, I, I think this has been a good conversation, and I, I I've said enough of what <laughs> I I think is my closing remarks. Um, yeah, all I mean, just all I'll say is 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 that path, man. It's, it's staying in the middle of it. It's the fact that you will you will venture off the path to the left or the right, or you'll you'll trip along the way. But the opportunity to recenter is not necessarily only when things are going bad. But that's definitely an important part. And, and again, I've said several times um, that this is an opportunity to when you need to recenter or you have that moment. One of the biggest factors is not only where you want to go, but again, if need be, what's different now compared to when things were easier and better yeah and sometimes that's not always an obvious answer but that's something that I think that you constantly need to be searching for um, and your life could be completely different too than when that time was absolutely so it, but it could be something simple you know it's like now oh yeah back when I was single and you know you know, I was in college, you know, I really enjoyed doing it. it's not like the fact that you're doing binge drinking on the weekend it's the fact that it's like oh I worked out more I I you know, I was able to, to do this hobby. Yeah. You know, I used to build model airplanes. I don't know, like I'm thinking about like a, a classic hobby. I used to build model airplanes and or tinker on my cars and stuff like that. And because now I have two kids and, and a lovely wife or a nice husband or whatever it is, and you realize that you're not giving enough time for yourself, and that might be the only little thing that you need to do. It's like, you know what, I'm going to go to the hobby store and I'm going to buy a model airplane and I'm going to build it in the next month. I love it. So. I agree. I agree. You good? Yeah. Well, no, who's, our, who's our sponsors? Same sponsors we talked about in the beginning. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Tinderbox of Houston, I'm still smoking the HR Maduro. I've enjoyed the cigar. 
Um, thank you, Tinderbox at Easton, for providing that weekly cigar. That's amazing that uh, Brian Joyce does that for us. And then um, uh, also, Altidus USA for the second cigar I'm about to light up, which is the Nicaragua series. It is better with the I figured it might be. Redneck Riviera. Yeah, and Redneck Riviera. Um, John Rich from Big and Rich. Yeah, good product, definitely worth trying out. And then um, also BS Cigar Company. Uh, stay tuned for more things to come from uh, that company as well. I, I'm excited to see what the next 12 months brings from BS Cigar Company. <laughs> and thank you to all you guys. Uh, as always, like, share. Uh, do all that good stuff to help us out, get the word out, tell people about it, tell your family about it, anyone that would uh, get something from this podcast, we appreciate it. Uh, we like having your guys' feedback. Wednesdays every week, around 7.30 to about 9.30 or so, it's uh, about that time now. Keep uh, a lookout for Whiskey Business, part two, part one and two. Part one and two, don't just Up and skip coming part one. next two weeks was a great questionnaire, great episodes with Dino, great man, and that will not be the last time that the pair of the two podcasts Absolutely. are together. But so. I did want to thank, as I was saying, I want to thank all you guys on Facebook Live for contributing to the conversation. Nights like tonight, Jake and I by ourselves, we have good conversation, but including you guys out there and contributing to it, it's like having, again, dozens or more of you know, a guest on the show. Yep. So having you guys uh, give us the feedback throughout and, and contribute to the conversation, that's what makes this podcast different than most as well, is that it's not just us putting out the audio, it's actually bringing you all in and bringing you into the garage and, and, and part of this community. So thank you guys very much for, for being a part of this and those of you on audio and YouTube, thank you guys for, for tuning in. And uh, Instagram, Facebook, Bourbon and BS Podcast, and then also, if you need to reach out to us, you can do it through the messengers on either of those or bourbonandbspodcast at gmail.com if you need to send an email to us, uh, if you want to share anything with us. Or if you do want to become a, a part of the show, whether it be a call-in thing, like a, a video, or if you're in the Columbus area, you're going to be in the Columbus area, you're around on a Wednesday night when we record, we are always looking for new guests and new uh, people to interview and new uh, perspectives as well. So please let us know if you want to be uh, on the podcast. And don't hesitate. Just tell us. Yep. These are the Wednesdays at work. When do you have Wednesdays? We'll schedule something. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. Episode 72. I'm Jake Sanders along with Steve Crane, and this is the Bourbon and BS Podcast. Cheers. Cheers.